Hello and welcome to CBS Sports HQ. Eric Casilius and Sherry Burris here with you. A busy Friday across the sports world. It's feeling kind of hard to keep track of so many games, EK. Yeah, uh, the one thing that's pretty easy to keep track of is golf majors because we haven't had one in over a year. But finally, we're out there in San Francisco at Harding Park. PGA in full effect day two and that means Tiger Woods front and center. Let's take a look how the whole day in golf went down. There he is the California native back in his home state coming off an opening round two under 68 and after a couple of pars to open his Friday some trouble on three tee shot on the par three the six iron 188 yards out in the greenside bunker and that'll end up with a bogey so he drops to one under. Now, chance to get it back on four, but 10 feet away, pushes it past the edge, taps in for par. Kind of the theme with Tiger Woods, those 10 footers just not going for him. Next hole, five, 10 footer. That's not just a different angle, that's actually a different hole and a different shot, but it looks a lot the same. On nine, more trouble. Greenside bunker, runs it past the hole, you end up with another bogey. But then Tiger got working on 10. Par fives. Majors, when he's done well, he's eaten up the par fives. He knocks that nine footer, and you're thinking, all right, here we go. But on 13 in the greenside bunker, it's a pretty good out here. Gets it to about seven feet, but can't knock down the seven footer. 0 for 7 in sand save so far this week. It's a big statistic. Tiger, usually one of the best getting up and down. On 15, trying to save par, misses the 20 footer. On the low side, he tapped in for another bogey. Right in the cut line there, but he ensured his weekend in the field on 16, just inside 10 feet, knocks that one down. Finally, got a good 10-footer, which really would have been the bugaboo for him. He knocks that in. So, currently his live odds to win are 100 to 1. No, not his best, as you see there. It just was not, just felt like he was really fighting his flat stick in that 10-foot range. But the positive spin is Tiger is and has made the cut at the 2020 PGA Championship. Now what about everybody else? 381 days since the last major championship. So let's get to it. And that means Brooks Koepka. You say major, you say Brooks Koepka. The two-time defending PGA champion carded a 466 Thursday. Kept the good vibes going early on Friday. First hole, second shot, 90 yards out, stuffs his wedge within five feet. So he started great. In the middle, there's a lot of this. Again, his left knee stretched out. So after a great start in the middle, where there's a lot of, you know, pulling and prying, he wants to finish up well and does so on 18 with a nine footer for birdie. He's now four to one in your favorite uh, entering the weekend. What about Rory, two time winner of this major, even par 70 in round one? Found his groove early in round two. 25 footer, birdie, pours it in on his eighth hole. Then on nine, looking for his third straight birdie. Blast the approach. Get up. Come on. Keep going. My dad says, roll ball in this situation. Everybody, you always got something to say, right? Well, Rory just says, um, that'd be great. I didn't do the very good accent because I don't want to cause an international incident because I'm not very good at it. Uh, he was not very good on 12 after four straight birdies. Look at this. You think this is going in? Nope. Four straight birdies and then a triple on 12. Weird day for Rory. Great day for Tommy Fleetwood, number 13 player in the world. After three early birdies, looking for more right before he made the turn. He started on 10, so this is 18. 33-footer. Knocking it down. Then on 7... Again, remember, he started on 10, so this is his back nine. Uh, chipping just off the green, nestled it up to three feet, finished that off for birdie. Six under 64, tarred for the lowest round of the championship thus far. Jason Day was your co-leader at five under after Thursday play, and he kept it rolling on Friday. On five, second shot in the deep rough, 162 yards out. Wouldn't you like to be able to do this just like once? No, I'm in the deep rough, 162 yards out. I'm going to stick it inside five feet. Casually walk up and knock it down for a birdie. Then on 10 for Eagle. 60 feet. We're not showing it to you because he missed. Actually, we are. It was really close, though. Taps in for a birdie. But like Rory, Day would find trouble on 12 for bogey. Nope. What's going on with 12 today? Gets the double. He ends up with a one under 69. And then, Hao Tong Lee. Who? Hao Tong Lee. 
Coming off an opening round, 367. This guy was clean today. First hole, 89 yards out in the fairway. Stuffs his approach inside three feet. Taps it in for birdie. On nine, 12 footer for birdie. Here's where birdie a lot with his name today. On 18, trying to finish with another birdie. Runs it just past. So we'll set up for the par, but a bogey free round, 565 on Friday. So Hao Tong Lee is your leader at eight under. Two shots clear of the field. He started at 100 to one. Now he's all the way down to 14 to one. Uh, interesting note, first player from China to ever lead at a major. And he's got a big smile on his face. He turned 25 this week. It's birthday week. He's leading at a major. He's setting history, all that other good stuff. But there will be six guys, two shots back. Foaming at the mouth to chase him down on Saturday, including Jason Day, Justin Rose, and you know who, Brooks Kepka. Guys who didn't make the cut, Ricky Fowler, Henrik Stenson, not good enough. They'll be watching the weekend on TV. I've been watching Doug Bell at the course all day. I love getting Mark Immelman. I've been watching that hotel room. Hopefully there's chocolates on the pillow tonight. <laughs> and I've been listening to Kyle Porter make play after play after play, breaking down this tournament. Um, let's start out at the course. Just give me sort of your eyes, what they saw with Tiger Woods from the time he walked out. You told me he put his shoes on himself in the parking lot like we do all the way through his round. Well, I tell you, Eric, uh, he just left the putting green. He was out here with Joe LaCava, his caddy, working on the stroke. Uh, and, and what he does with short putts when he practices, he just does it with his right hand. So he was out here for 30 minutes practicing with just his right hand. Uh, he, he detected something in the stroke today. Uh, the putter was not as good as it was yesterday. You mentioned his stats out of the bunker, 0 for 7. And, you know, sometimes uh, you hit it up there in a decent spot, but you need to make the putt. And so that was a problem for Tiger. That's the bad news. The last two times we've him now at the Memorial and here at the PGA Championship. Instead of talking about him contending, we're talking about him struggling to make the cut. But the good news is I say he's only six shots back. Nothing against Hao Tong Lee, who's eight under par. But I think you look at the guys that are six under, and then you go from there, and Tiger's at even. So heading into Saturday, six shots back, uh, a good round on Saturday. And who knows, maybe Tiger will be back in the conversation. But, yeah, definitely a flat round when you only have two birdies and four bogeys on the card. That's not good. That's not what we expect from Tiger Woods. Kyle, let's follow up on what Doug just said. I mean, if you told me that Tiger Woods would be 0 for 7 getting up and down and basically would miss everything from 10 feet for two days, I would have thought there's no way he's making the cut. Yet somehow he hit the ball pretty well for two days. Give me a report card for Tiger Woods. He did hit the ball pretty well, and he putted it well on Thursday. You know, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, what the putter choice is on Saturday. I'm sure there'll be a lot of... Uh, a lot of consternation around that, but uh, he, he putted it well on Thursday, hit it well, uh, maybe not major championship winning well, but well enough to at least be in contention. And again, just no putts dropped on Friday. And, and when that happens, you know, I, I thought Tiger had a real opportunity uh, on Friday afternoon late. Uh, nobody's really making a move. It was kind of out there in front of him for both him uh, and Rory McIlroy and Justin Thomas, who was kind of in it. And none of them really took advantage. I thought Tiger had a real chance to kind of play his way, kind of sneakily play his way into the tournament late on Friday. And, and he just was was unable to capitalize on uh, what I thought was a, a pretty decent day from tee to green. Kyle, I agree with you. But in my opinion, when it comes to major championships, all the greats, all these multiple major champions, they start finding form Saturday afternoon and then certainly Sunday. So Thursday or Friday, they're just trying really not to play themselves out of things. Now, if I was giving him a grade today, I would give him a C plus, but just really because he played over pi, he shot 72. But we know this for certain. Majors, they're frustrating, they're difficult, they're punitive, and they're pressure-packed. And every shot that you're hitting, especially here this week on a firm golf course that has firmed up, the rough is dangerous. These greens, some of the whole locations, were up on little perches and stuff. We saw guys missing short putts. You know, things could go wrong very, very quickly. So Woods kind of escaped what was what could have been really poor this afternoon, in my opinion. He kept himself in the tournament, but he has to now get out tomorrow, figure out a way to rattle some putts in, maybe by will, who knows. 
but just to get himself to two, three, four under parts and give himself a Sunday shot. Mark, let's talk about the leader here, Hao Tong Lee, who he's Tiger and everybody else is chasing. Look, this guy's made the President's Cup team. Uh, he's the first player from China to ever lead in a major. Like, this is not somebody who they, you know, pulled out of the galley who won the church <laughs> raffle to be sleeping on the lead after 36 holes. This is an elite player that maybe we just kind of gloss over a little bit. What did you see with him? What do you know about him? Well, I actually watched him practice a little bit on Wednesday. Now, let's just take a step back to last week in Memphis at the World Golf Championships event. He finished well down the field. I think it was like 75th or something. Really battled with the ball striking, especially off the tee. And I obviously paid attention to him, given that he played on the President's Cup team. And my brother's uh, influence line up there. So I went and watched, and I thought the preparation went very well. He's powerful. He flies the thing over 300 off the tee. He's got a highly repetitive golf swing, and he seemed to be gaining some traction Wednesday. Obviously, shoots under par in day one. And today's round, really, to make just one bogey through 36 holes around this place, that is some pretty sound golf. Incidentally, one of his two European tour wins, he held off one dude whose name rhymes with Rory McIlroy. This was in <laughs> Dubai. <laughs> Doug. He hit to the final over the, right. out of the top draw, really. Now, Doug, this is, uh, you know, I heard Mark say highly repetitive golf swing. Part of the reason is because he's taken a lot of them. I mean, when his round was over, <laughs> he went to the range. I, is he still there is the question. <laughs> is he just going to keep going right until his tee time tomorrow? What was it like from the course here? Well, it was it was truly amazing because uh, I mean he finished earlier today, uh, came to the putting green, and I was walking all around. I was following Tiger. I was watching Jason Day. I was here there. Next thing I know, he's down in the range. I mean he was down there for hours, and the guys are down there. They want to cut the greens, and he's on the chipping green, hitting all sorts of shots, and they're waiting. And they're waiting, and he keeps hitting more shots. So that tells me one thing. Number one, uh, he didn't know what to do with himself in San Francisco on an afternoon. But number two, I think I think he probably feels that he needs to practice a little bit. And, you know, he came in after the opening round, and he said, listen, that was a little bit of a surprise. He follows it up with another solid day. Felt needed to go out on a Friday night and practice a little bit. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. Hopefully it'll help. Hopefully he didn't wear himself out, Eric. Yeah, I, I think we've... I think we've got some some Hao Tong Lee problems right now because uh, the what he did on Friday night does not engender a lot of confidence going into Saturday. You go out and spend three or four hours on the range, and you're the leader overnight of a major championship, and the fact that you've kind of gotten it done mostly this week with a hot putter. Uh, I feel a 77, 78 coming on on Saturday. Now I like Hao Tong Lee. I think Hao Tong Lee <laughs> is a really, really solid, good player. I think he's going to contend at events for a really long time. He's super young. He's super talented. I love his swing. I just don't think it's going to be this week at the PGA Championship. Yeah, he, he's like that person at the gym. You walk in, they're on the treadmill. You do your full workout. You shower up, you get your bag, you walk out, and they're still on the treadmill. And you're, uh, you know. Meanwhile, Brooks Kepka's the guy at the gym who's pounding the squat rack and the preacher curls. He looks the part. He's been great. He's part of that six under chasing. Uh, is Kepka the favorite in your mind going forward right now? And what did you see from him today, Mark? Uh, look, you have to respect Brooks Kep. I'm just a little concerned by the stretching you see on the golf course. If you want to make a gym reference, if I go in and I see some guy getting worked on by a trainer, I get instantly concerned. Uh, my favorite, honestly, is Tommy Fleetwood. The guy draws the golf ball at will. It's his stock shot. He's driving it awesome. He earned his place. He's not his dues, if you will. He's been close in two U.S. Opens. I think they were 17, 18. Runner-up at the Open Championship to Shane Lowry last year. So this guy's been trending. He's playing the two clubs in the bag, the driver and the putter. The two straight clubs, to me, are the most important majors. He's got those both working very well. My favorite, with respect to Brooks, is Tommy Fleetwood. I think it's got to be Brooks. I mean, he, he's been so solid through the first couple days. Uh, I, I don't think, you know, this is an approximation. It seems like he's made about 950 par putts of 9 to 10 feet over the last four years because it, it, he, he has this ability to, and, and this is what we've seen kind of the opposite with Rory McIlroy, he has this ability to save himself. We talk about the birdies and the, the scoring and the driver, uh, and he's got the ball on a string with his irons, all this stuff. 
he has this innate ability to save himself at these major championships to where he doesn't bring a huge number into play. We don't see Brooks going out making doubles and triples and, and these really big numbers at major championships. And as a result, he's got all this forward momentum. He's always going downhill at major championships. And uh, yeah, I, I think <laughs> it's very easy to envision Brooks Kepka leading the 2020 PGA Championship on Saturday night, like he did in 2018, like he did in 2019. Maybe not by as much as he did last year, but I think Brooks is going to be your third, third round leader going into Sunday. Uh, Mark brings up a good point, though. I, I don't, I was surprised to see the trainer out there and him getting, you know, stretched and not just like, you know, touch your toes, let's roll, but real stretching mid round at the holes. Did we expect that to be the case? And what was sort of the buzz on the course about that, Doug? Well, I tell you, uh, I, I was kind of walking with it for a few holes, and it looked to me like he was favoring that leg. And and I, I agree with Mark Emmelman. It's never a good sign when the trainer's out there working on you in between holes. I mean, that's that's kind of a rarity in golf. But at the same time, I uh, saw some good stuff from Brooks Kepka. Two days in a row now, he's birdie number 18. That's that's no gimme par four, and he's right there. Uh, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. Today's round kind of reminded me of his Friday round in Memphis. Remember, he played brilliantly on Thursday, uh, kind of flat on Friday, played solid on Saturday, and then almost brought it home on Sunday. So he's following the same pattern here. But to me, that is a bit of a concern with the trainer working on that leg, the knee area, stretching him out. Uh, that's that's kind of you see that more in tennis than you do golf. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. All right, well, Doug, you kick us off right now. Who's going to win the tournament? If you knew what you knew now and we were making our pre-tournament <laughs> picks, who would you take? He's the leader with eight under. We've got a two-stroke lead over a bunch of guys. Brooks, Day, Justin Rose, they know about majors. DJ had a very quiet two days, and he's sitting there at four yeah. under. Xander Shoffley sitting there at four under. I didn't even mention them. Wow. Who's your guy right now? Well, it's wide open, that's for sure. But the guy I really like, and I watched him today, and the swing is back, the power is back in that swing, is Jason Day. And he loves this championship. You know, over the last 10 years, he has eight top 25s in the PGA Championship, including that win at Whistling Straits. And he was out here just a few minutes ago working on his putting. You know, he hit only like 50 feet of putts today. Uh, he didn't hit anything, and yet he's right there. He's one of the best putters in the world. I expect that part of his game to wake up this weekend. And what I visually saw today was a guy whose game is back in form, came in playing great, three top tens the last three weeks, and today I saw the velocity and everything back. Uh, I really like Jason Day. I think the former world number one is headed back in that direction again. Doug, I'm with you. I like Jason Day. In fact, I like this leaderboard. It's such a mix of players and just as a test cementing park. But I just want to reference the closing holes because you're going to have to play those closing holes 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Those holes along Lake Merced said, said well. And there's been a westerly blowing, and that westerly blows across from the left hand side, which is unto a right hand player. Tommy Fleetwood's turning the thing habitually from right to left. That means he can hold it up against this breeze. I feel like he'll be a bit more comfortable putting the ball in play off the tee, which gives him a chance with the irons, and then that just flows forwards. So, look, you've got to stay in front of a bunch of show ponies. But Fleetwood, the way he's hitting it, is my guy. Yeah, I'm taking Kapka. I don't. If you ask me who's winning a major right now, first round, third round, what the auto the auto answer is Kapka. Uh, if he's near the top of the leaderboard, and here's the thing though, going into Saturday, I think this is something that we're missing a little bit. If you don't believe in Hao Tong Lee, and I don't know after watching that range session how anybody really could right now, then you've got 30 guys that are within four strokes of the six under number, the Fleetwood Kepka. Jason Day number 30 guys within four strokes of that number is very different than what we saw in 2019 at Beth Page Black. So I'm going into Saturday thinking this is going to be wild. I mean, depending on how the course is set up, if it's scoreable, we're going to get a, 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 a kind of a preposterous, I think, Saturday afternoon, which should be a ton of fun. But I think uh, eventually, just like the last two years, Kepka emerges as uh, the leader on Saturday night and the favorite going into Sunday. All right, so a vote for Jason Day, a vote for Fleetwood, a vote for Kepka. I can't get anybody to take DJ. 
or Xander Shoffley, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Excellent work, gentlemen. We'll be doing it all weekend long. CBS, your home on all the platforms. You want to watch it. You want to check it out, including you watch the tournament right there on the CBS Sports app. And then our coverage right there, CBS, Harding Park, San Francisco, Saturday, 4 o'clock Eastern, Sunday, 3 o'clock, all Quest Wanamaker. Oh, it's going to do it for us. Sherry Burr. Fun. Eric Casilli, it's always a blast with you. Stay with us. We have more coming up at the top of the hour. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.